Good evening, and it's great to have you with us here on a Wednesday night. And we begin tonight with the questions so many Americans are asking. How soon will parts of the country reopen, and what will it look like when it does? President Trump moments ago saying he will unveil national guidelines tomorrow on how to reopen the country. But right here tonight, my interview with Dr. Anthony Fauci about what this country will look like, a reality check on what we will all have to do in the weeks and months to come. All of this as the death toll in the U.S. approaches 28,000, 2,500 deaths in the last 24 hours alone. Nearly a third of those deaths in New York, 752 in the past day, the eighth day above 700, a flattening of the curve, but as you can see, at a devastating level. And tonight, Governor Andrew Cuomo now ordering the wearing of masks to keep the virus in check. The peak they hope has been reached here, and tonight other parts of the country still have not reached their apex. More than 17 million Americans out of work. New numbers coming tomorrow. That number expected to spike again. The first stimulus checks arriving. And the global firestorm tonight after President Trump revealed his plans to halt funding to the World Health Organization in the middle of this global pandemic. Our exclusive interview with Bill and Melinda Gates tonight. Their reaction to the president's move. What they told me as they make news tonight themselves. Their big announcement right here. We will carefully get to it all. And we begin with ABC's Tom Yamas right here in New York. Tonight, the relentless battle against the coronavirus. Even as New York flattens the curve, the death toll is rising. 752 people dying in just the past 24 hours. At Mount Sinai Beth Israel Hospital, Dr. Eric Eiting has been working the overnight shift. We're seeing plenty of coronavirus cases. Um, some people as young as in their 20s um, and people as old as in their 80s. This week, the hospital reversing its policies to allow some families time with their loved ones. We decided to change it for um, patients where um, they're very near the end of life so that people don't have to die alone. And today, New York Governor Andrew Cuomo issuing an executive order requiring everyone to start wearing face coverings in public. In Massachusetts, the governor announcing deaths in the state now topping 1,000. And I would say at this point in time that we are in the surge, yes. And in Miami, a line of cars snaking around Hard Rock Stadium. Hundreds showing up to be tested. But for many, the wait ending in disappointment. The facility can only perform 700 tests a day. I came here yesterday. I couldn't do it, so I have to come back today. And tonight, a growing consensus that stepped-up testing is the key to putting America back to work. The more testing, the more open the economy. But... Uh, there's not enough national capacity to do this. I'm telling you, we can't do it without federal support. Today, the Wall Street Journal reporting that President Trump on a conference call was urged by executives on his recovery task force to dramatically increase testing capability in order to get the economy going. For the people waiting in unemployment lines in Florida and converging on food pantries in Phoenix, it can't come soon enough. Outside San Francisco, Nick Stanford, now unemployed, is pinching pennies at the grocery store. We're, we're barely, barely scraping by and, you know, we're getting behind, you know, we're, we're struggling. And President Trump has yet to release federal guidance on how the country might reopen and today facing backlash over his decision to strip funding from the World Health Organization. The WHO failed in this basic duty and must be held accountable. Today, an outcry in some circles, from the American Nurses Association, which called the move misguided, to Bill and Melinda Gates, who have donated millions to the fight against COVID-19, and sat down with David Muir for an exclusive interview. I wanted to ask you, Bill, you know, we've reported uh, here in the last 24 hours the president revealing that he wants to halt all U.S. aid to the World Health Organization. Do you agree with that move? Well, I'm hopeful that he doesn't follow through on that, because we need their support. This is a global problem. Uh, they are the institution that, you know, brings nations together and makes sure that, you know, that we're sharing uh, best practices between all of those countries. There'll be plenty of time to look back and see which countries did things well, which didn't. Where should WHO have done things differently? Have you tried to reach out to the president on this? We did tweet our support for the WHO. You know, we don't think they should have to start letting people go in the middle of the first modern pandemic. WHO was created after World War II to deal with exactly these kinds of issues around the world. So halting funding right now, that just doesn't make any sense. 
And David, the president says tomorrow at a news conference he's going to release a plan for all 50 states to open. It's going to be the president's guidelines. We'll have to wait and see what he says. David. Tom Yamas tonight. Tom, thanks. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.